My name is Sahar, and I am uh, from Florida Atlantic University. Uh, the title of our research is Deep Learning for Financial Sentiment Analysis. In our research, we try to find out if uh, deep learning can help us to predict uh, different investors' sentiment about uh, stock price. In my presentation, after a, a very brief introduction, I will talk a little bit about the stock tweet website that we use their data set to, uh, um, to, uh, pr to prove their claim. And after that, uh, I will take a little bit, a very quick uh, look at why deep learning can be helpful in our work and the advantages of deep uh, learning that may be helpful in, uh, um, in this area and the methods that we uh, work on them. At the end, I will uh, take a look at the, all the methods that we look at them. Uh, it is very common uh, on the internet that people uh, come together and try to uh, negotiate with each other about different uh, different uh, stuff. For example, we have Yelp, we have um, TripAdvisor, Wikipedia. They are all famous uh, websites that people come together and try to negotiate with each other and use their experiments about different uh, different uh, topics. Over 150 years, personal investment advice was exclusive domain for investment bank and wealth advisors, such as Goldman Sachs and Lehman Brothers. But internet provides this opportunity for us to ask uh, all the people around the world to get together with each other and try to negotiate with each other and try to uh, have their experiments to, um, to have the better investment uh, for different uh, stock. Two, one, uh, two most websites are uh, seeking off on stock to it. StockTweet uh, published in 2009, and it is the main, uh, uh, the main page of the uh, StockTweet website. As you can see here, people can come here and um, follow the stock that uh, we are interested on them, and uh, they can see the current price for different uh, stock, and they can uh, sell or buy different uh, stock. The most important things here for us is uh, the message that people can write about different as such. At, at the, uh, when a person, when a user or investor come to this website, they can write a very brief message, message about what he or she think about this uh, stock. And also, each person can specify if he or she is bearish or bullish. For example, here you can see that this person specifies him or herself as a bullish person. But what's the meaning of bearish or bullish? Bullish is a person, is an investor that believes that the stock price will be increased over the time. So he or she thinks that it is the right time to buy in the stock. On the other hand, bearish person is an investor who thinks that the stock price will be increased, decline or decrease over the time. So it is not the right time to buy in the stock. We try to find, based on this data set, we think that if there is any relation between a person or investor's uh, sentiment and the price, um, price of a stock, we, if we can find a new relation between these two variables, we can predict a stock price in the future. So it will be very helpful because all of us try to know what will happen in the stock market. And if this website can help us to predict the stock price in the future, it will be great. So we try to find a correlation, if there is any correlation between these two values. We use Pearson correlation coefficient function to find this uh, relation. And based on the result, for top authors, we find that top authors, um, actually this function uh, bring, it bring back us an, a value between 1 and minus 1. 1 means that two variables are completely correlated with each other. On the other hand, minus 1 means that two, value, two variables are completely reverse um, uh, uh, correlation with each other, and zero means that there isn't any correlation between two variables, two values, two variables, sorry. 
So uh, for top authors, peer-to-tone correlation coefficient based on our data set was 0 0.4, which is really good. By top author, I mean that we should have a period of time as a benchmark because, uh, for example, during the one year, we just follow as, uh, people to see who is uh, the best investor's prediction, who is the best investor price. So who can predict the price better in compared to other investors? We just try to follow that person as a top authors and then based on the result, with the accuracy of 75%, top authors can correctly predict the pr stock price in a um, future stock price. There is one problem here. Only 10% of people specify if they are bearish or bullish. So we should find a way to find out how we can predict sentiment of different other 90% investors. We think that the only thing that may help us is a message. Maybe we can, under, we can uh, based on their message, we can uh, predict their p different people investors. So we take a look at different message and as a first solution, we think about uh, machine learning. We have the six, uh, six first months of the uh, 2016 as our data set, and we apply logistic regression, and uh, bag of the word was our method, and based on the um, logistic regression, we have the accuracy of 79%, which we think that maybe we should find a way to improve this number. So we use logistic regression as a benchmark, and then uh, things that maybe deep learning can help us to improve our accuracy. Why we think about deep learning? The problem in the uh, back of the world is that we do feature, feature engineering when we are using back of the world. I mean that we just select our word, but when we are using deep learning, we use or we, we do not select anything. We learn or feature during the process of deep learning. So we don't have feature engineering in deep learning. So, uh, and based on the result, uh, deep learning has a very powerful similarity model because in deep learning, we consider order of the word and also we can skip, so, we, when we have the order of word, we, have, we can keep the sentiment of word. I mean that we do not just consider each word separately. For example, look at here. If we look, take a look at word underestimate, underestimate alone has a negative uh, meaning for us. We can we classify this word as a um, negative word. But in a sentence, underestimated stock, it has a positive um, value for us. So. I mean that bag of the word cannot give us the perfect result. We should consider word in a sentence. So we need to have our sentence as an input, as a value, as well as the word. So we think that maybe Dr. Weck can help us. Dr. Weck uh, published in 2014 by Google, and uh, it has a, um, in a Dr. Weck, we have po our paragraph as input as well as our word. And also, we have our words and then also our paragraph and try to guess the next word based on the words and based on the paragraph. So paragraph here work as a memory. So we have order of word here. And think, we think that maybe Dr. Weck can help us to uh, um, we gain the better, the better result in compared to machine learning. Back to Weck has two different architecture, distributed memory architecture and also distributed bag of the word. Okay. Uh, in, a, in distributed bag of the word, we just have uh, only paragraph as a vector. We do not um, have word and we also we have a window, different size window and based on this window, we predict uh, our features. Based on our results, as you can see here, in a the window set size of 10, we have the accuracy of 70, uh, 67%, which is not good in compared to our benchmark, which is uh, 79%. So Dr. Weck is not a good um, 
uh, algorithm for us. So we think that maybe long short term memory recurrent neural network can help us. We apply a recurrent neural network and apply average pooling on our data set. And um, I don't have enough time to explain about our algorithm, but um, based on the results, we have the uh, just only 70% accuracy, which is not very good at all, again, for our, um, in compared to our baseline. At the end, we think about convolution neural network. Convolution neural network can be helpful because it tries to use the inter uh, internal structure of data. This internal structure, um, and also it used same weight during the process of convolution. It doesn't change this uh, um, weight. So it not only reduced the memory usage, but also it improved uh, the accurate, the performance of our, um, our result. Uh, and also same as the previous model, it do not have that much feature engineering. In order to preparing our data for um, convolution neural network, we clean our text and then we uh, pad each sentences to the high, uh, to the longest, uh, to the maximum sentence length. And then we try to assign an array with a size of embedding size to each word. We try to make a tensor because we use TensorFlow to implement our work. We try to make a tensor to um, as an input to our model. So we assign a vector of size 128, I will show you, to each word to make um, our tensor. Here we can see our uh, architecture. We, as you can see here in a sentence matrix, we have a word as an entry of or uh, as a row element, and uh, as I told you, as I told, uh, we have the array of 121, uh, 128 or embedding size for each word, and we have three different filter filter size of three, four, and five, and we have 128 number of each filter. We apply our filter in our sentence matrix, and then non or nonlinear function is rectified linear. After applying uh, our filter, you can see that we have um, 128 lists for each of our filter, based on and the size of uh, each uh, list depends on to the size of our filter. After that, we apply. Um, Max pooling and uh, extract 128 uh, mm, number from all of our um, list, and then we apply, uh, we just concatenate all of one, uh, all of 128 for each, um, um, each for each filter, and then uh, apply softmax on our result, and we, in this way we classify our uh, message to the bullish or bearish or positive or negative sentences. Here our result. Based on our result, it's very surprising for us that convolution neural network is work really good in compared to other models for detecting sent, uh, different investor sentiments. Uh, after two. Uh, after 2000 uh, iteration, the accuracy of uh, convolution neural network is quite similar to um, logistic regression or baseline. After 4,000 step iteration, it overpassed um, logistic regression. And it's very surprising, after about 70,000 per uh, uh, thousand iteration, the accuracy of convolution neural network is around 99%, which is really, really a uh, great result for uh, sentiment analysis. And this is our references that we use in this research and just this. Uh, he asked if it is a general generalization accuracy. You mean that we just try to find all the, uh, because we our data is labeled, we just use the label data and stuck to it. And we select, uh, you know, we find the result and then comp uh, we have the result and then we have the number of correct one to com uh, com in compared to the, all, of the, um, all of the sample that we have. Sorry? We just split our data set to, two to, uh, to total um, equal split and then uh, apply it on it. All of the data sets are labels. And we apply it on a train data set and uh, we try to uh, measure the accuracy on a train in a test data set. Thank you very much.